This is the story of Henry Lovegood. That's not Henry. Ah, this is Henry. Henry lived a simple life. But simple as he was, so did he live in discipline, upright character, and profound cleanliness. But on this day, a Sunday like any other, Henry would make one fatal mistake. It wasn't in the way he meticulously prepared his breakfast. It wasn't in the way he meticulously ate his piggy toast. But rather it was in the way he prepared himself, his very soul, for that one fateful Sunday. Oblivious to what awaited him, Henry left his home never to return the same. For you see, Henry had set his own trap. He'd rung his own bell. And now the bell tolled for him. Don't be like Henry. Don't get left behind. Set your clocks back for daylight savings. <laughs> Robert Farley! You got left behind too! If you would, please turn in your Bibles to Psalms 39, verse 7. Now, my last couple of messages, they have been focusing on our upcoming elections. And I'm going to do a real rapid review of that, the past messages, and we're going to close with a couple of, of thoughts. Psalms 39, verse 7, it reads this. Now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in you. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you for this chance to, to share your word. I thank you for the, the technology that allows me to, to pre-record this message on a, on a Saturday night so that, that I can, even though I can't be exposed to others at this point, that I can prepare a message and still present your word online for those who, uh, from the church so that they can, can still hear your word. And I ask today that you'd be with uh, uh, Brother Leroy, who's going to be filling in for me uh, this, uh, this morning at church. Be with him and, and the message that he delivers to those there. And for those who are tuning in and, and catching this message here online, may hearts and minds be open to your word. May I set aside my, my wants, my desires, and truly teach your word. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, two weeks ago, we looked at how voting is a birthright to all U.S. citizens, Christian and non-Christian alike. We looked briefly at the story of Jacob and Esau and how Esau gave up his birthright to his brother Jacob because he saw no value in it. Esau saw no value in his birthright. I stress that how important voting is for Americans. We, we explored how more than 40% of Americans in general and 60% of Christians fail to vote. We saw that how failure to vote is giving up your birthright as an American. Last week, using Christ as our example, we looked at just four of the many values that we should look for when we select our leaders. We should look for things like 
leaders who stand for and speak the truth. We should seek leaders who challenge us to be more than we are. We should find leaders who, who value us. And we should pursue leaders who are moved by compassion and a sense of self-sacrifice. What I've not done is look at specific issues. I shouldn't need to. I shouldn't need to. For the Christian, God's word should be your guide. It should be your guide. A true Christian knows where God stands on these issues. We turn our vote into an act of worship when we vote how God desires, rather than our personal needs or wants, rather than voting for our pocketbook or, or for tradition. You see, all men are sinners. None are saints. So there is no perfect choice in this election. There's no perfect choice in any election. But what we should do is vote for a candidate that says what they will do and based upon their past actions, lead us to believe that they will do as they say. James 4.17 tells us, Therefore to him that knows to do good and does it not, to him it is sin. I think if James was, was writing to the voters today, he would say to a Christian, a Christian who knowingly votes for someone who promotes an agenda that is counter to God's desires, is sinning. Your vote is a sin if you vote for someone that is going to do something that they blatantly say is going to be against God's desires. Before you vote, Christian, know the issues and know where God stands on those issues. And please vote godly values. To the non-Christian, I share this. Romans 2, verses 14 and 15 states, For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these, having not the law, are a law to themselves, which show the work of their heart written, and which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the mean while accusing or else excusing one another. Maybe you reject, or perhaps you just simply don't know God. But either way, voting is your American birthright. And Romans 2, 14 and 15 clarifies that, that God has provided you with an inner sense of right and wrong. Your conscience testifies to this. My advice to you is no different than it is to a Christian. Don't Vote based upon your pocketbook or upon personal desires. Vote on what you know is right. Know that your vote on November 3rd influences the direction of this country and the birthright that you leave for future generations. One final thought. How should we proceed after November 3rd if the election results don't turn out the way we want? I mean, you wake up Wednesday morning, the presidential choice that you wanted didn't get in, or the governor you wanted didn't get in, the amendment that you wanted to pass didn't go through. The Christian, I tell you, we should act no differently then than at any other time. Remember these five things. First, God, as always, is in control. God is sovereign, meaning he is ultimately in control of everything, including election results. No matter who is selected by a human vote, God is in control. Romans 13, 1 states, Let every soul be subject to the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. You see, Whoever becomes president, governor, mayor, senator, and so on, 
their election is ultimately determined by God and the direction that God wants us to move. You know, <laughs> we may wake up Wednesday morning and we'll think, boy, did God make a mistake. God doesn't make mistakes. God does not make mistakes. We may never understand why God institutes a particular leader or a particular policy, but always remember, God is in control. Second, don't needlessly worry. I find the exact phrase, fear not, in my King James Bible 62 times. This covers times when individuals or the nation of Israel faced enemies, persecution, famine, grief, captivity, and more. And they were told to fear not. In Matthew 6.34, Jesus tells, tells his disciples and, and tells us, Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Jesus is telling us, don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about it. You know, how often do we start worrying about things that never come to pass? How, time, how many times have you stayed awake at night? You couldn't fall asleep because you expected some terrible thing to happen the next day, and it didn't happen. You know, I have strong political views, but hopefully I don't let those opinions become my focus. And what should my focus be? Jesus laid it out in Matthew 6, 36 and 37, and in Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. Essentially, it boils down to three things. Love God, love others, and spread the gospel. That should always be my focus. Number three, Christians are citizens of heaven. Two weeks ago, I mentioned that God promised a land to Israel, but God never made a similar promise to Christians. Philip tells, or Paul tells us in Philippians chapter 3 that our citizenship is in heaven. Sure, we, we are citizens of an earthly country, but ultimately, we're foreigners here. We're foreigners. Our real citizenship is in heaven. So why get worked up about election results here on earth? Remember, our king is the sovereign, or our leader is the sovereign King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Fourth, no matter who our elected leaders are, pray for them. Pray for them. The, the person I wanted to get in didn't, didn't get elected. Why should I pray for them? I want them to fail. I don't want... Listen, 2 Timothy Verses 2, 1 through 3, Paul tells Timothy, he says, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. You see, it doesn't matter who the elected leaders are, we are to pray for them. And think of it this way. Why would you not want what is best for our country? If you fail to, to pray for your leaders, <laughs> you know, we should want God to impact how our leaders lead. We should want God to work in their hearts. We should want God to protect them. We should want them to have wisdom given to them by God. Many of our leaders, they're not saved. They do not know the Lord. And we should pray to God to reveal himself to them. As always, pray for your leaders. And number five, our real hope is in Christ. If, if we are paying too much attention and we're worrying too much about an election 
then we're showing that our trust is in the wrong spot. We're not putting our trust where it should be. Our hope shouldn't be in politicians or political parties. It shouldn't be in money or positions of influence. See, each of these, they, they have their place, but these are temporal things. We live in a temporal, temporal world, and it will pass one day. There is only one, though, who is permanent and reliable, and that is the Lord. You know, we get bombarded every day on the, the news channels, the talk show hosts, social media, politicians, and more. They keep telling us that this is the most important election ever. You know, I've heard that, that same cry ever since the hanging, hanging chads of 2000, maybe longer, you remember when, when they're arguing about hanging chads on, on the voting, uh, you know, dimples on the voting cards in Florida? Should it count as a vote? Was it, was it a real vote? Or did they just accidentally mark something? In Psalms 39, verse 7, King David puts it this way. And now, Lord... What wait I for? My hope is in you. Our hope should always start and it should always end with our Lord. Let us pray. Lord, in this election cycle, help us to remember to keep our priorities right. May our vote be an act of worship where we select according to your will. And no matter the outcome, may we conduct ourselves in ways that properly honor and glorify you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Real quick, again, don't forget to set your clocks next week. Back, you know, spring forward, fall back. Set them back an hour the, the next week. If you live in the Dripping Springs area, uh, north of Columbia, Missouri, we invite you to visit our church. Our morning services are at 930 Bible study is at 11. Um, if today's message was a blessing for you, uh, please click on the subscribe button. And finally, this online message today is the conclusion of a series that I started at the church, taking a biblical look at elections. This concludes the series. This, this message today concludes that series. Um, I've not been at the church because I had possibly been exposed to COVID. Uh, this Sunday we have a person, uh, Leroy Welch, who is filling in for me. So if you can make it to the morning service, be there, be there. Leroy, I'd love to see you there. Um, next week though, as long as I show no, no uh, uh, signs of infection, I will be back in the pulpit. Um, but, I got off track there for a moment. I'm going to be starting a new series online called Countryside Reflections. Uh, you know, I understand that, that in this time of COVID, flu season's approaching, and winter's just around the corner, that you may not be able to make it to, to church, either whether you're a member here or if you attend to a, another church in the area, but you just can't make it. And so uh, when this happens, I invite you to join us online for these these brief studies that are be put online uh, on Sunday mornings. My goal is for each of these to be about 10, 15 minutes, uh, all these little nuggets. Hopefully, these little nuggets will help you keep focused on the majesty and the mercy of our Lord. And I hope to get at least two of these online a month, hopefully more, but we'll, we'll see how uh, time permits. Um, I'll try and have these online on Sunday mornings by 9.30, but it, our main service is also at 9.30, so if you can catch us, we invite you to visit us. Um, so I'll just close now. Until we next meet, may the Lord watch over and guide you in the days to come. God bless.